suddenly it becomes a thing we glory in. Oh, Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you for a way that I can escape the hold of this awful sinful man that I am. Oh, wretched man, Paul cried, that I am. Think what it took for the Spirit of God dealing with his heart to bring, him to bring a religious Pharisee to that place where he looked inside and said, I'm a wretched man. Oh, God, deliver me. These are some of the things that are involved in becoming a part of the family that will live forever. I pray that, I, I, I believe there's many here that know what I'm talking about. But I pray if you're one that isn't part of this family, that God will somehow take this word and others that you've heard and begin to stir in your heart something that says, hey, I need this, I want this. Listen to what he says. Verse 16, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who come in and see the light can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. What God is saying, he's sending his light into the world and nothing is going to wind up being hidden. This is God putting the light. So if you think you're going to, you, any, any member of Adam's family thinks they're going to find a way around what God has said, ain't going to happen. There is no other end for Adam's family but to die. But thank God there's no other end for those who are in Christ but to live. Thank God for what he's brought forth when he, when he brought forth his son out of that tomb. So what's the conclusion of all of this that he's been talking about? This, this connects back to everything he said about the, the ministry of the Word of God, the different kinds of soil. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Isn't that the key? The one on the path didn't listen at all. The one on the, on the, the rocky soil sort of listened in a very superficial way. They didn't really get it. They kind of got the good stuff didn't realize the cost. And as soon as they began to realize what it cost and what the real deal was, they said, uh-uh. Suddenly a resistance went up. So how they listened was with resistance, with answering back. And, and you could go right on through the kinds of soil and you see that it was how they listened that, that made all the difference. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Now, what's he talking about there? What is it that the one has? Think about that. He who has, what is it that they have? Well, they have a listening heart. They have a willingness to listen. There is a hungry heart that says, when God's word comes, it says, yes, Lord, I receive that into my heart. And not only that, Lord, I want more. There's an openness to the word of God. But what happens if God begins to speak and it begins to be like backpedaling and resistance? God says, I'll take away even what you have. Connect that back to what he said about why Jesus spoke in parables. Why did he speak to the people in parables? Because among them, there had been a resistance to the word of God. God was putting them in a position where they had a handful could hunger. There were people among them who could see and say, yes, there's something to this. I want more. I want to understand more. But most of the people just glazed right over, went right by them, right over their heads. This was God's, I'll tell you, it's a serious thing when God gives out his word. He doesn't give it out lightly. He doesn't beg. He sends forth his word to rescue an unworthy people from a certain fate. You think about the people that, in the different reactions there were to Jesus. I was thinking about John chapter 8. You know, it talks about how there were many people, as he spoke, that believed on him. It says they believed. Well, what kind of belief was it? You know, you had one class here that believed too. They, they heard the word, they believed, and the, the only, it didn't last, though, did it? But as soon as Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're really my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, now that didn't set too well. 
Oh, they got offended. Self rose up and said, now, wait a minute. Don't you dare. What you, you, you have the wrong idea, Jesus. Who do you think we are? We're not slaves to anybody. We, we're Abraham's children. And they began to backpedal and, 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 I, and throw up their resistance. How do you react when you hear the word of God that comes searching your heart? Think about the Israelites. This, is, this was pretty typical. When, G, when God says, all day long have I stretched out my hand, what does it go on to say? Obstinate, gainsaying, all kinds of different words that all say the same thing. There's somebody that throws up a, bar a barrier and resists and said, what they're basically saying is, God, you're wrong. You say it's this way, I say you're wrong. It's this way. Oh, God, help us to have a humble spirit when we hear the word of God, when it searches our hearts. And say, and say Lord, help me. I think of the, uh, the, the little widow. I don't know if she's a widow or not, but she was a, she was a mother, Canaanite woman. Jesus went to side on to have some, or to tire, I think it was, to, to just have a rest and get away from the crowds. This was a Gentile city. And the fame had gone ahead and this woman came and begged him. My daughter has a demon. Cast her out. And you remember what happened? Jesus didn't say a word. After a while, the disciples got all perturbed about this. They said, no, wait, Jesus, send her away. She's just crying after us. She won't leave us alone. And Jesus said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I don't think Jesus said this in a mean, vindictive way. I think he was just stating a fact. That God had sent him on a mission to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There was going to come a time when the gospel was going to go everywhere. But right now, it was time for God to fulfill the promises that he had filled the Old Testament prophets with. There was going to come a time of redemption. There was going to come a Savior. And now it was the time to proclaim that message among the Israelites and, and harvest God's people from among them. And then he was going to take that and form it into his, his church and begin to reach out across the world. This was the time to reach the, to reach the Israelites. And so he just stated a fact. And he said, it's, it, it's not meat. It's not proper to take the children's food. This, you know, let the children have all they want. It's not proper to take their food and give it to the dogs. Now, how many of you would have survived that test? We are proud, self-willed creatures. How dare you speak to me in such tones? I thought you were supposed to be, supposed to be loving, merciful. And you call me a dog? I'm out of here. What did she do? Truth, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He said, for this saying, go your way. Your daughter's healed. I haven't found so, so, so great faith in Israel, it says in one of, the, one, of the, uh, one of the passages. I'll tell you, what kind of a hero was she? She's somebody who just humbled herself. No matter what he said and how he said it, she saw the value of what he was saying. That's, what, that's my life. It's your words. If I will just receive your words, I don't care what they, what they do to me, how they insult me, what, they, what truth they uncover in me, I, I embrace it because it's my life.